everyone, welcome back to another video from Trossin Robotics. In today's video, we will be walking you through everything you need to get started with your brand new Trossin Robotics AI Arm. We will cover the full setup from prepping your laptop, installing software, checking the firmware, and even running a few demos. Whether you are just getting started or planning to use this arm in a bigger project, this guide will help you hit the ground running. All right, let's kick things off by setting up your laptop. The first thing we need to do is configure the network settings. So go ahead and open your wired connection settings and create a new profile. Under the IPv4 tab, change the method to manual and enter the following. IP address as 192.168.1.1 and the subnet mask as 255.255.255.0. This basically makes sure that your laptop can connect with the robot over Ethernet. Next, grab your arm and clamp it securely to your table. Once it's mounted and stable, go ahead and plug in the Ethernet cable, one end into the control box and the other into your laptop. Now if you're planning to use a camera, go ahead and plug your USB cable into your laptop. But don't worry, we will be covering more about the cameras later on in this series. Go ahead and power on your control box. You should be able to see a green LED and that's your signal that everything is powered up and good to go. Now let's make sure that your arm is actually connected to your laptop. The standalone arms get shipped with a default IP address of 192.168.1.2, but you can change it later on whenever you need it. To scan the network and double check everything is connected, open the terminal and run nmap-sn 192.168.1.0/24. You should see two devices pop up, your laptop listed as 192.168.1.1 and your standalone arm listed as 192.168.1.2. If you see both, great. Now your laptop and your arm are communicating with each other over the network. Now that the connection is confirmed, let's go ahead and install the necessary drivers. The driver is available in C++ as well as Python. I'll walk you through both of them. Just make sure that the versions of the firmware and the driver match each other or else it can cause unexpected issues and the arm might not work as expected. Let's start with Python. You can use tools like Conda, VN or Virtual N and create a virtual environment. They help keep your dependencies clean and isolated from your other projects. You can find more information about each of these using the links given in the description. For this setup, I'll be using Conda, but feel free to use whichever one you are comfortable with. Once the setup is activated, just run pip install trossin arm. After it installs, you can check if everything went smoothly by running pip show trossin arm. If the package details show up, you're good to go. That's all you need to start writing Python scripts and controlling your arm right from the terminal. Now, if you are more into C++, here's how you can set that up. Start by cloning the official Trossin driver repository from GitHub. Then head into the folder, make a build directory and run CMake with the appropriate flags for your system. And finally, Install the driver by running sudo make install. Depending upon what flags you use in your CMake, the driver will be either installed in the user space or system-wide. And that's it. Whether you are using C++ or Python, you have your drivers installed and ready to go. Let's say you need to update the firmware. Here's how to do it. Just a heads up before we begin. Updating your firmware will reset your settings to factory defaults. So if you have any custom changes, make sure to save them somewhere so that you can restore them after the update. All right, here's the process step by step. First, we will install the required packages. Open your terminal and run the command to install build essentials and libusb dev. These are needed to build the firmware flashing tool. Next, we are going to clone the teensy C loader CLI from GitHub. Once that's done, Navigate to the folder and run make to build the executable. After build is complete, copy the executable into your system path so that you can run it from anywhere. Now, configure the udev rules. This will allow your system to recognize the Teensy board correctly if it's connected via USB. Next, download the firmware version you want to flash. Unzip the folder so that you can access the actual firmware files. Now connect the control box to your laptop using USB cable. Once everything's connected, go ahead and flash the firmware using the Teensy Loader CLI. You'll need to specify the microcontroller type and the path 
to the firmware file in the command. After the flashing process is complete, your controller should be running the new firmware and ready to go. That's it, your firmware is now up to date. Now that your ARM is set up and talking to your laptop, let's walk you through some basic demo scripts. We have included examples in Python as well as C++. The functions are pretty much the same in both languages. For this video, I'll be using Python and showing you the C++ equivalents when needed. We'll go deeper into the APIs in the upcoming videos, but for now, let's get started with the basics. First up is the configure cleanup script. This one gives you a lot of essential information about your ARM, like the friction constants, transition velocities, coulomb and viscous frictions, coefficients, and continuity factor. It also displays your network settings like the IP, DNS, and gateway. Before running the script, make sure that you set the correct model name and IP address for your ARM. I'm using a leader ARM with the IP address 192.168.1.2. I don't have a follower ARM connected at the moment, so I'll be just commenting out that part. Once you run the script, you should be able to see a clean output showing all your ARM's configuration. If there aren't any errors, you're good to go. Next is the gravity compensation script. This puts the ARM into the gravity compensation mode, which allows you to move it freely by hand. I'm using the leader model here, so I'll set that in the configuration file. Just a heads up, it's really important to match the script model to your actual hardware. If you don't, you might get some strange behavior because the leader and the follower have different attachments and weight distributions. The script sets the control mode to external effort mode and then zeroes out all the efforts which activate gravity compensation. Once that's done, you can gently move the arm around and it should feel smooth and balanced. Now let's make the arm move with the simple move script. Here's what's happening behind the scenes. First, we disable the gripper using external torque. Then we use set arm position to move the joints to the specific pose. The motion duration is set to two seconds, but you can also set it to zero for instant motion. Just be careful if the current and the target positions are too far apart Setting instant move can trigger discontinuity error because the arm needs to exceed its maximum velocity limit. You also have the option to choose between blocking and non-blocking calls. Blocking means the script waits until the movement is complete before continuing, while the non-blocking allows it to keep running even if the arm is still moving. Let's wrap up with the teleoperation script. This demo works with two arms, one leader and one follower. In this case, the leader is at 192.168.1.2 and the follower is at 192.168.1.4. The script begins by setting both the arms with their respective model types and IP addresses. Then it moves both arms to their home position. After that, teleoperation begins and runs for a fixed amount of time. We have set it to 20 seconds here. We also set a force feedback gain using minus 0.1 in this example. So the leader arm reacts to the efforts of the follower. During the session, the follower's joint position and velocities are matched to those of the leader. We have set the move time to zero, so the motion feels instant and responsive. Once the time runs out, both arms return to the home position and enter sleep mode. And that's it for getting started with your new Trosson AI robotic arms. We have covered everything from setting up your laptop, initializing your arm, installing drivers, and updating firmware, to running some demo scripts. I hope this video is helpful. Have fun experimenting with these arms, and we are excited to see what you build with them. In the next few videos, we will be diving deeper into the API and more cool and advanced features. Catch you in the next one. Trosson Robotics helping innovators innovate.